welcome back to my channel. My name is Maya and this is where I talk about book stuff. So before we get started today, I just want to say a happy Hanukkah to anyone who is celebrating. I am Jewish and that's important for you to know for today's video because today I'm going to be talking about the 10 Jewish books that I read this year. So before I get started actually talking about the books today, I do want to give you a little bit of background about why I chose to make this video and why I specifically chose to read the books that I did read for this list because um, they aren't really your quintessential Jewish books. If you don't want to listen to me talk about that preamble, you can definitely skip ahead to this time where I start talking about the books themselves. I also would just like to apologize if you can hear a weird noise in the background. That is my dog rolling around this little treat ball that he has that keeps him occupied while I'm filming because once I sit down on the couch and start talking, he thinks I'm talking to him and that it's playtime. So he's with this little ball so he behaves. So I just want to talk a little bit about why I chose to read these books. I used to read Jewish literature all the time. I read tons of it when I was a kid, when I was in high school, and when I was in university doing my degree, I predominantly studied Jewish literature. Uh, I did my master's thesis, it wasn't really a thesis, but I did my master's thesis on a Jewish book. And so a lot of my reading growing up and throughout university had been focused on Jewish texts. After I finished university, I unintentionally stopped reading Jewish books. I say this as unintentional because for about four years after I finished my master's degree, I just didn't read at all. My degree made me hate reading. And then after I started picking up reading again, I gravitated towards genre fiction. A byproduct of no longer reading literature meant that I stopped reading Jewish books because at least for me, most of the books that are well-known Jewish books are, you know, dense, heavy literary books. And that's just not what I wanted to read. I think for anyone who is part of a uh, non-dominant group, it is a lot easier to find books that are about those heavy, important topics uh, than it is to find kind of fun, happy books that contain representation of your identity. This year, I realized how much I miss those Jewish books. So I made a conscious decision to start reading Jewish literature again and sought out all of the fun sci-fi, fantasy, romance, graphic novels, fun, kind of fluffy Jewish books that I could find. So none of the books that you will see today are, you know, dense books on what it means to be Jewish. They are books that are about something else, but contain Jewish characters and Jewish representation in them. So for each of the books that I'm going to talk about today, I will give you a summary of the book, tell you my general thoughts and feelings on the book, and then I'll dive a little bit deeper into what the Jewish representation looked like in this book. So the first Jewish book that I read this year is The Invisible Wall by Harry Bernstein. And this is my mom's favorite book on earth and she had been trying to get me to read it for years and years and I finally agreed to read this and another one of her favorite books for a video that I made earlier in the year. And this book is a memoir told by Harry Bernstein and it's about his experiences of growing up in a mill town in England uh, on the verge of World War I. And this book really centers on the story of Harry Bernstein's sister and how she ended up falling in love with a non-Jewish man and how the whole town and family and community reacted to their relationship. This book was really enjoyable for me to read and it was kind of like a slice of life of what Jewish life would have been like in the UK in 1914. And I really enjoyed just getting to see this Jewish community live their life and all the institutions and practices and traditions that happened in this time period. I also really enjoyed getting to compare the experience of a Jewish and non-Jewish relationship in 1914. 14 versus my parents' relationship and my own relationship because I am the child of a Jewish person and a non-Jewish person and I myself am married to a non-Jewish person. So it was really interesting for me to read this book and see how the beliefs on intermarriage in Jewish faith have changed over the last 100 years. So anyways, this is the book that started it all and made me want to continue reading more Jewish books. 
The next Jewish book that I read is the Lady Astronaut series by Mary Robinette Cole and this is a duology. The first book is The Calculating Stars and the second book is The Faded Sky. Uh, so this book is a really interesting fascinating uh, alternative history science fiction that actually ended up winning the Hugo Award this year so it's really good. This book takes place in 1950s America and a meteorite lands on earth and just obliterates the east coast of the US and that meteorite ends up causing this huge climate catastrophe and as a result the US and the world as a whole ends up really putting everything they have into the space race because if humanity is going to survive they need to leave planet earth and find a new planet to live on. So this book follows the story of a Jewish pilot and physicist named Elma York. She is a very talented physicist and mathematician and a super talented pilot and when the space race starts happening and there's a call for astronauts, Elma wants to become involved. She knows that she has something to offer and she wants to be an astronaut. She wants to help colonize space and save humanity. However, this book takes place in 1950s America, so the institutions that are recruiting astronauts are extremely, extremely sexist. So the first book in this series is just about Elma's experience of fighting to become a pilot and the sexism she experiences as a part of that. The second book in this series follows the events of the first book, obviously, and is a lot more focused on race relations in the US and the uh, segregated and prejudiced policies that are in place because it is 1950s America. Alma is Jewish and her Jewish identity isn't a super huge part of this book. Um, the way that you see her Jewish identity is essentially that time in the story revolves around Jewish holidays and Jewish life events and I just really appreciated that because that's how my life happens, you know? But the way that Jewish identity was really uh, incorporated into the story was actually looking at the intersectionality of Alma's identity and prejudice. In the first book, Alma experiences a lot of prejudice herself. She is discriminated against for her gender as well as her mental illness and at times her Judaism. But at the same time, she's extremely privileged. So my favorite thing about this book was actually how this book looked at race and privilege because Alma uh, wrongfully thinks that because she has experienced prejudice she understands everyone's prejudice and so there are some really wonderful interactions in this book where Alma is kind of putting her own experiences and her own beliefs um, and trying to understand the experiences of people of color and black pilots and black astronauts in this book. And it is just such a wonderful representation of the idea that even though you may experience prejudice yourself, you can still be privileged and still be prejudiced. This is very much about Elma learning to not equate her experiences of prejudice with someone else's experiences. And it is just such fantastic discussions uh, about that topic, which I think is integral to Jewish identity. At least for me, um, being aware of the Jewish history of prejudice and discrimination and using that knowledge and awareness to listen to people who are marginalized in society and to fight for social justice for those people is an integral part of being Jewish. So I really enjoyed how that was incorporated into the story. So the next Jewish book that I read this year is actually a series and I read all three books of this series back to back because I adored it. And that series is The Diviners by Libba Bray. Uh, the first book is The Diviners, the second book is Lair of Dreams, and the third book is Before the Devil Breaks You. So this is a paranormal fantasy series that is set in 1920s in New York. And each book essentially follows a series of ghostly murders that are occurring in New York City and this gang of teenagers who have special powers and try to stop those ghosts. It is super creepy and eerie and one of the most delightful series that I have ever read. So this book probably has some of the most minimal Jewish content out of all the books that I'm discussing here. So in this book there are a couple of Jewish characters. The Jewish characters in this book are predominantly defined through a racial perspective of Jewish identity, which as the story ends up going on we find out is very integral and important to this story. As this series goes on. We learned that a lot of the 
ghosts that are kind of coming to life and appearing in New York City are very much created by America's extremely racist, discriminatory, and prejudiced past. And as the book continues on, we also discover that some of the kind of magic and powers that the characters have are deeply connected to the eugenics movement that's going on in the US in the 20s. So based on those two contexts, it makes perfect sense that the Jewish characters in this book are defined through a racial perspective. And as it goes on, that racial perspective becomes increasingly important. So there isn't a heck of a lot of Jewish representation in this book. The Jewish characters are kind of lumped in with a bunch of other characters that are parts of marginalized identities that have experienced discrimination in US history. But the way that collective experience of discrimination and collective eugenics movement is incorporated into the kind of magic and paranormal elements of this story is one of the most mind-blowing, chilling, and disturbing things that I have ever read and it was just utterly fantastic and I could not recommend it more. So while the Jewish elements of this book are quite minimal, to me they were extremely impactful. So the next Jewish book that I read is Little and Lion by Brandy Colbert and this is a contemporary YA novel about a girl named Suzette who has a really close relationship with her brother. However, when her brother is diagnosed with bipolar disorder, it kind of upends everything in her family and her parents end up sending her to a boarding school to kind of just move her away from some of the struggles that are happening in her family. So this book follows what happens when Suzette moves back to her family's house uh, for the summer and tries to repair her relationship with her brother. And this book is also about Suzette discovering and accepting her bisexuality and kind of coming out to her family as bisexual. So the Jewish representation that we see in this book is really different from the books that I have described so far. Suzette and her mother are black and they converted to Judaism when Suzette was a child and her mother married a Jewish man. This book talks a lot about the assumptions that people have about being Jewish, one of them being that Jewish people are white. And this book kind of talks about Suzette's experience of specifically going to an East Coast boarding school that has a high Jewish population, but not fitting into that Jewish population because she is black and her family converted to Judaism. This book is really Jewish. It depicts a lot of Jewish practices, Jewish belief, um, Jewish life cycles, Jewish events, Jewish holidays, and things like that. And I absolutely love that. I also loved uh, the discussion of conversion and how important being Jewish was to Suzette and her mother in order to feel connected and really feel like a family. And so uh, the Jewish representation in this book was utterly fantastic. This wasn't my favorite book of all time just because this book has a love square, like three different love interests that the main character is kind of trying to gravitate and it was a little bit frustrating because three love interests, but I did really love the depiction of family and Jewish identity that I found in this book. So the next book that I read was A Bend in the Stars by Rachel Berenbaum. And this is a more traditional Jewish historical fiction, kind of more what you would expect for Jewish literature. This is a historical fiction that takes place in Latvia on the eve of World War I. And it follows a pair of siblings named Miri and Vanya. Uh, Miri is a surgeon. She is one of the first female surgeons in Latvia working at this very famous Jewish hospital. So Vanya is a physicist and he is working to try to prove and expand Einstein's theory of relativity by getting pictures of an eclipse in order to show how light bends. So this book takes place on the eve of World War One. As World War One breaks out, all Jewish men in Latvia and the Soviet Union are conscripted to join the war. Jewish men are conscripted first because they are the least valuable and nobody in the Soviet Union cares if they get killed. So this book is essentially a race against time where Miri and Vanya are trying to escape Europe and come to America before Vanya gets conscripted. But before they come to America, Vanya needs to photograph this eclipse because that is his way into the US. If he can photograph this eclipse, he can become a professor at Harvard and can continue his research. 
Uh, so this is essentially a kind of chase escape novel that follows their journey out of Latvia and trying to make it to the US. And it was a super fast paced novel that I really enjoyed. Miria and Vanya are both super interesting, well developed, compelling characters that have their own interests and abilities that are very outside the norm of the world that they are living in. This book also contains a really, really fantastic stressful romance that I was surprised by how much I enjoyed. It also is a book that in terms of its Jewish representation is very traditional. Living in Latvia in World War One, Miri and Vanya are very immersed in Jewish culture. They have a Jewish community. Uh, they just are very Jewish. Their life revolves around Jewish holidays, but they also experience a lot of prejudice and discrimination in their world. So it is kind of that, I guess, traditional Jewish representation about anti-semitism and Jewish identity trying to survive but I really enjoyed the kind of different focus of the story of World War One and the kind of science elements that were really at the forefront of the story. So it was very different from what I have read in terms of other Jewish historical fiction and I really really enjoyed it. And there's my dog. Hi bad boy! So the next Jewish book that I read is The Girl in the Red Balloon by Catherine Locke. And this is a YA historical fiction sci-fi fantasy. It's, it's a genre bender. I don't really know what to categorize this as. But essentially this is a story of Ellie. She is the daughter of a Holocaust survivor and she ends up going to Germany on a school trip. And while she's in Germany she's kind of struggling with what it means to be in Germany as the daughter of a Holocaust survivor and kind of trying to grapple with her knowledge of Germany in the past and her knowledge of Germany as it is now. As this book goes on we learn that her grandfather ended up escaping a concentration camp through very non-traditional means. So while Ellie is in Germany, she ends up getting transported back in time to 1988 Berlin via this magical red balloon. This story then follows alternating timelines of Ellie's experience of being transported back in time to 1988 Berlin and Ellie's grandfather's experience of being put in a concentration camp in 1942. And this book is essentially about Ellie learning about the balloon makers who are these people that create these magical balloons that allow people to escape East Germany and learning a little bit about their history and impact throughout the world. This book shows Ellie as kind of a modern Jewish woman who is very connected to her Jewish identity and kind of discusses a lot about her struggles of being in East Germany in 1988 and not being able to identify and connect to her Jewish identity and especially how being you know away from home in another country as well as another time period that lack of connection to her Jewish identity is really important. On the whole this book discusses a lot about the legacy of the Holocaust rather than the Holocaust itself. So it's not really about the kind of horrors that her grandfather went through but about how we remember the Holocaust, how we remember stories about the Holocaust and like whose stories get told and whose stories get remembered, about who's important, who's influential, who has power over history and it's a really interesting and unique conversation that uses magic and time travel to do that. This was a really unique story that I really enjoyed and would highly recommend. So the last Jewish book that I read this year is Spinning Silver by Naomi Novik and this is a sort of historically inspired fantasy book that is a retelling of Rumpelstiltskin but I don't actually know the story of Rumpelstiltskin so that doesn't really mean anything to me. So this story takes place in a kind of fictional historical Lithuania and it follows Miriam and Miriam is the daughter of a very kind and empathetic moneylender which therefore means he's not a very good moneylender. So her family is living in the brink of poverty and just struggling and Miriam decides to take it upon herself to take over her father's money lending business and she is a very kind of strict harsh severe moneylender but she ends up being very successful and ends up becoming wealthy very quickly. So in this story Miriam's village is next to this magical forest where these kind of ice fairy creatures called the Stark live and the Stark come and raid the village for silver and gold. They steal any of the villagers valuable possessions. So as Miriam becomes more wealthy in her talents as a moneylender she attracts the attention of the Stark and brings this danger to her village 
accidentally by trying to take care of her family. So the Stark are these ice creatures that kind of make it winter and essentially the story is about Miriam and two other women trying to save their kingdom from the Stark and trying to stop this never-ending winter from coming. And this book was really enjoyable. The I think this book takes a lot of like traditional Jewish ritual um, stories in the Torah and the Talmud and Jewish belief and practices and incorporates them in a really unique and magical way. There are a lot of things that happen in this book that are, you know, very Jewish, just normal Jewish rituals, but they become magical in this book and it was so cool. This book also talks a lot about kind of anti-Semitism, but also prejudice in general, and a lot about uh, cultural knowledge and cultural learning. And the twist that happens at the end of this book is kind of intimately connected to that idea of unlearning your prejudice and discovering and learning new cultures. And it was such a cool twist at the end of this book. So I've talked a lot about how much I love these elements of the book, but I do just want to say this isn't uh, my favorite out of the bunch here. The story was very detailed and very descriptive at times which ended up making it a little bit slower so in terms of kind of pacing it's not my absolute favorite but that experience of kind of Jewish belief and Jewish tradition being mixed with fantastical magic was so cool and so unlike anything I've ever read and for that alone I just absolutely love this book. So those are all of the Jewish books that I read this year and I would say that I really enjoyed all of them. The Lady Astronaut series and Diviner series are two of my absolute favorite books of all time now and I don't know that I would have read them if I hadn't kind of set out on this mission to read Jewish books so I'm really excited that I exposed myself to those new books because they are absolute favorites now. Thank you for watching this video. I am going to continue on my journey of Jewish reading so if you have any recommendations for Jewish science fiction, fantasy, young adult, graphic novels, or romance novels, please let me know. Romance is the kind of one genre that I really enjoy reading, but I wasn't able to find a Jewish book that really piqued my interest. So if you have any Jewish romance recommendations especially, please let me know. Thank you very much for watching and goodbye!